21 year old Oliver lives with Down syndrome. She can wash her clothes and is learning to do laundry as a business, as well as engage in craft and beadwork and hairdressing. Under instruction, she can also bake a cake. In the community, people look at her as someone maybe who is cast, someone who can't do anything on her own. Every Friday we have a community walk. So we take them out to the community and we greet the neighbors, we create awareness. So every time the people in the community see these children or the young adults, they are educated and they learn to accept them. Howan Sanji is the director of outreach at Embrace Culture. It is a post-primary school center where they teach vocational skills. Oliver is already ahead. She is faster than most of her peers in the class. The 21-year-old Oliver can do all this is a powerful testimony that if given the chance, many others living with Down syndrome can do a lot. Doctors say that most children with Down syndrome don't live that long, at least not in countries like Uganda, where specialized care is not affordable and all a priority. You have people thinking that this is due to witchcraft or, you know, bad luck or things like that. Definitely the quality of life for children with Down syndrome is not that good. Most are hidden away from the communities. They're not even identified as children of the family. Most are sent away to other relatives to be raised. So if you think about it, most are identified as kasiru or something of the sort, dumb, you know. However, with appropriate medical care and family support, as, as a current children, Down syndrome can actually live until age 60 or 70. I think I can even live up until age 80. The only challenge is that as they grow older, um, it's been proven that they actually have more issues, particularly with dementia and Alzheimer's. These are really brain diseases. So these might actually cut their lifespan a little bit shorter. But if you're looking at, for example, in Uganda, the lifespan of a child with Down syndrome, on average, I don't think most actually exceed probably 10 years of life. If you're looking at the fact that the holes they have in their hearts and actually do not enable them to be active. Prince is three years old. He has Down syndrome. And he also had three defaults on the heart. And uh, surprisingly enough, actually, after finding out that uh, he had Down syndrome, that's when now we started experiencing the health challenges. I have to accept that this child is born different for me to be able to, to live for him so that he can also have a life. He has a challenge with his bowels. So uh, we monitor his diet because we were advised his operation will be done when he's about five years old. Down syndrome is the world's most common chromosomal condition. The cause is not clear, but doctors say it commonly occurs to mothers who deliver children when they are above 35 years. You can have cases in which you actually inherit um, uh, chromosomes, an extra pair of Down syndrome. Down syndrome children have slanted eyes like Chinese. It used to be called Mongolism after a province in China. They also have flat nose and forehead flat back of the head and a short neck. They appear to have a large tongue when in reality it is the mouth which is small. Their growth milestones are slower than most children. For example, they start crawling after 11 months, speak their first words after 18 months or two years, and might not walk until after two years. They are normally short due to weak growth hormones and become slightly chubby when growing up because of their slow metabolic rate. Almost all will have eye problems including short-sightedness, long-sightedness and eyes which don't align. Very many, almost 75%, will be deaf, largely caused by recurrent ear infections. They have a low immune system, often get pneumonia and are prone to cancers of the blood. Children with Down syndrome have a relatively low IQ but can be productive. Prince's mother insists he must study in an ordinary school to allow him to interact with other children so that he can pick up. When these children are in normal schools, they are challenged by these other children. So they fight hard also to make sure that they achieve what other children are doing. So, but I do not blame the parents that have their children in, in a special needs school. The whole problem is because their children have been denied from these other schools. Uganda's education system is not the most favorable for these children and it becomes harder as they grow up because they are not prepared for a world of independence. That is what centers like Embrace Culture are trying to do. It's important that the government is able to um, train health workers to actually be able to identify children with Down syndrome and um, as well as be able to refer them to appropriate um, places. 
Secondly, the government should actually commission a study to know how many children we have with Down syndrome. If we know how many children we have with Down syndrome, then perhaps we can actually be able to appropriate resources as, as per the health budget to be able to deal with the children with Down syndrome. Three is the government still needs to be able to inject more money as regards approaches to, pe to people with Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome, they need to be taught how to speak, they need to be taught how to actually act independently, they need to also be able to survive in society. All those need particular health professionals to actually be able to do this. Down syndrome comes with huge costs that not many Ugandan parents can afford. It costs about 500 US dollars, approximately 1.8 million shillings, to diagnose the condition using chromosome tests. There is no facility to do that in Uganda, so the test samples have to be flown to South Africa. I was talking to a speech pathologist who was telling me, as at current, um, the cost of, of one consult of a speech pathologist is $80, and that's if that's if you've get, you're getting someone who cannot actually you know, cut the price for you. So if you think about it, if you need a session or two a week, okay, until this child is able to achieve particular milestones such as uttering words or achieving head control or achieving independence with their actions, you know, we're going to look at, in just a month, we're looking at more than, than $500, let's say. Perhaps if there was a prenatal diagnosis centre in Uganda, parents would be better prepared to support these children. Anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 children are born with Down syndrome annually in Uganda. And this number could increase as more women start having children at a later age, mainly because they are developing their careers. But that said, it's not saying that everyone who has a child, let me say after 35 or after 40, is actually going to have a child with Down syndrome. As you grow older, it means that your proofreading mechanism is pretty poor. So your chances of actually having a default in the chromosome separation is going to be much, much, much higher. So as you grow older, that means your chances of conceiving a child with Down syndrome also become higher. It is not easy raising a child with Down syndrome. It is done with love, passion and support. People do not have that courage of walking to you and ask you what happened to your child. So because they cannot ask, so somebody will create a story. Say this woman was trying to maybe to get rich and she ended up in witchcraft. And that's why the child looks the way he looks. So the, that the stigma that these children are facing is what is very, very frustrating. Josephine Karunji, NTV.